So ladies and gentlemen, I'm Halo MCR and welcome to yet another game review of mine. And uh, to briefly touch bases on what the game is, this is The Walking Dead Survivors, which is a free-to-play mobile strategy video game developed by Elix, licensed by Skybound Entertainment, based on the comic book series The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman, Tony Moore, and Charlie Adlard. Genre, it is a strategy MMOG which it's titled as well in the store as a strategy build type game. So it shares a lot of similarities to Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, uh, Boom Beach, for those that are familiar with Boom Beach. It's kind of an older game. Uh, it's kind of like a game like that. So if you're familiar especially with Clash of Clans, you would fit right at home into this game. Platform is iOS Android. Publishers are Galaxy Play Technology Limited. So, basically, a breakdown of what this game is. This is another spin off series of The Walking Dead, which The Walking Dead has a lot of games. I mean, there's just a lot of them. There's the Telltale series, Walking Dead. There is the other spin off, Walking Deads, which there's so many of them that I couldn't even really tell you right off the bat, right off my hand exactly how many exactly of these games there are but this is just one of the many games in the series that you know at first it really caught my attention I found it to be extremely unique um, at first I will admit I was deceived into thinking that this was going to be a type of game where you just hold out against zombies as you guys can see right now you know that's kind of what you think you're playing but in reality it's a lot more different than that um, it basically has this, like I said, the same elements as Clash of Clan. You collect resources to build up your town hall, to build up your village, and the resources would be, um, basically water, food, stone, meat, and a bunch of just other little things like that, and you can find these resources abundantly just pretty much everywhere from little farming pits that are scattered throughout the whole entire map and um, you could basically stick your soldiers into these little resource uh, camp farms to essentially just keep farming the same resource of you need let's say if I need a bunch of wood well I would stick a bunch of my troops into this little camp mint that has a wood farming uh, design in it essentially to where I'm just there to farm the wood and leave, and you can leave it over time, uh, but also, if you're not watching it constantly, it can put you at a risk for getting attacked by other players and then disturbing your farming, essentially. So, this is one of those type of games where you definitely need to be active as much as possible. Maybe not as much if you're not running a clan, but if you're running a clan, this is one of those types of games where... It's not something you could just play for a couple hours and then come back a few days later. When you decide to play The Walking Dead Survivors, it is definitely a commitment of its own and more more so in starting a clan. And one of the other things that I would like to touch on while we're ahead as well is the microtransaction systems of the game and how it functions exactly. So this game in particular as unfortunate as it is it can be very pay to win in certain aspects in the aspect of basically just saving time on building your encampment if you pay for either a builder which is provided for free a couple of different times throughout the game through the elite pass which the elite pass so the elite pass basically you feed gems into it and you can get gems for free towards it or whatever by just playing the game actually one of the cool things about this game I feel like in my opinion is that they're not very shy when it comes to giving out free gems which these free gems can be used to either speed your buildings up like in Clash of Clans or upgrade the elite pass and every time you upgrade the elite pass up a level it basically makes it to where you gain like buffs essentially per tier so let's say I bounce up from one to three tier right uh buying these tier pass points well 
now at level three i get eight percent more farm on everything and more gold or more whatever so essentially there's an incentive to pay to get that elite pass up faster that way you can get more resources quicker and faster than most people can by just not paying for it and just getting gems for free by playing the game and again i mean let me emphasis on the fact that as much as it can be pay to win and it really does suck because one of the main problems with this game unfortunately is the fact that money gets to people's heads and they think that they can be toxic and run the server and do whatever the hell they want and if somebody dare ever speak up against them or have a different opinion than them then if the server don't like you they'll just team up on you and kill you and take you out and completely ruin the experience for anybody that's a new player that could potentially want to play this game long term which is a very big turn off in my opinion i think that's absolute bullshit that wells can pretty much dictate how the game is going to go for you and essentially the main goal to this game is that you are building your resource up and your town and everything and getting all your troops leveled up that way you and your clan can be one of the top four to one clans by the end of the season now there are seasons in this game there are time limits to when a new server starts you have so long like a month or two or something like that to basically get leveled up as quick as you can join a clan and try to get to the end with only four top clans actually remaining realistically at the end of like the objective of the game which is to get to this end to basically fight more people and uh farm more resources and then when you get to the end with the four clans there's only four of you guys honestly remaining as you got to start out capture these communities they're called communities which are little towns that are labeled as c1 c2 and c3 so essentially you start out fresh all primal with nothing and you're just getting started and you automatically would want to move to the first community that you see now here's where it gets really frustrating and really agonizing is unless you just happen to get lucky and go up against another clan that's at that community because that's what you should be doing the first thing you should be doing in the game besides upgrading is getting ready to move your base all the way to a community so that you may take over said community and then you build outposts essentially from that community one that you are gonna have to fight against other clans for which can be very hectic and very time consuming and very just annoying in certain aspects because if your team is not doing very good then you might as well not even keep playing if you are trying to make your own clan now if you join a good clan that just has expensive players on it then it's a lot more easier said than done you just play the game and be active but as a clan leader which i've been a clan leader multiple times and i've been playing the game for a few months now for about four or five months until recently i took a break from it um you know you could get one start where there's not that many good clans around your community and there's about i want to say five to six communities of one maybe i think five five to four to six somewhere around that number of community ones to twos to threes actually i think as a as the third community there's only four i believe so and essentially starting out at the first one again building these outposts to get to the second one once you take over the first one because you have to take over these communities while fighting these other clans that want to take over it too and whoever gets those communities gets basically resource buffs or a bunch of uh, goodies essentially and along the way you'll see little golden camps and you also try to take over those two as well if your team is actually good because keep in mind anytime i've ever tried to run a clan in this game um people don't listen they either don't listen or they do what they want or they're not active or they don't know how to follow simple directions such as take the camp at so and so time which 
there will be some good and bad in this video for sure. I mean, it's not going to all just be bad. But one of the good things is that you can set a time, a specific standard of the day to attack said community one, where you will have to have a majority of people on to help you take over this, as you will be taking out 200 something zombies in about one hour, which is a bad thing because it shouldn't take only an hour to do this. It should take longer. It should compensate for the fact that your clan is not all there or they're not active, or when you first get into a server and it wipes, it's kind of like Rust in that example. A server wipes every other day. Not the server you're playing on currently, but new servers constantly are popping up every day. So if you were to get a bad start on a server, you could just wait three to four days and a new one will pop up. And some people will get into the habit of getting to Town Hall 6 and then waiting until the new server drops and then they just uh, rolled relocation token essentially you they use a token to relocate them to that new server when it wipes or when it starts and when a new server starts where everybody's primal and another bad thing now I can think of is that your progress will not transfer over if you start spending a lot of money on a particular server and you want to go play with your friends on another server that they're on you're gonna have to make a whole new account to do so. So when I exercise extreme caution in spending, only if you are content with being in that server with those kind of people, because though the people that are there when you start that server are gonna be the people that are gonna be there long term, and you'll have to either get along with them, and if not, get griefed and get, and I mean terribly griefed, and I mean like. You really can't trust a lot of people in this game. Everybody's out for themselves, um, which is not really good. I mean, if new players don't know what they're doing, they need positive reinforcement and positive uh, support to get them through the game so they understand what they're doing. But there's a lot of temporarily alliances. There's a lot of pretending to actually genuinely care about somebody, but then turn around and stab them in the back. So it shares so much similarities to Rust, because in that aspect of Rust, you don't trust anybody. I mean, the number one rule in Rust is you don't trust anybody or trust a naked. The same could almost genuinely be applied in this concept to this game, that you are going up against other people, and there really can only be four clans at the end of the day. Once the four clans, the top four clans, or the people that spend the most money, take control of the communities one through three you push towards the middle and the four clans compete against each other to essentially be top clan and there's other things involved with it as well as i have not gotten that far in depth into the game to even tell you what the end game result is pretty much like but i i've seen enough to kind of know and essentially the top clans at the end of the season or at the end the given time that it takes for everyone to take all the communities, um, the clans, the top four clans will battle out, and yes, there will only be four, meaning that eventually, if you're not up there in that top four, that you will be attacked, and you will be destroyed, and you'll be forced to join bigger clans, and doing so, which is extremely discouraging, because, I mean, if you ask me, you shouldn't have to spend a, a fuck ton of money in a game like this just to have a chance to compete with top clans, it's unfair it's not really good you know but again let me stress the fact that there may seem like there's a lot of negatives but there are good things about this game some more good things i'll give you guys some more good things here's one for example as i touched on earlier with receiving a lot of resources resources seem to be very abundant you can raid uh zombie spawn pits to get more resources and <clears throat> the more zombies you kill at different levels which are ranging from 1 to 20 1 being the lowest and 20 being very hard and you better have some really strong troops that are super upgraded for that kind of battle but as you get stronger your troops the zombie pits get stronger and they give you more uh, resources or gems or things that you really need in order to progress further into the game to get stronger troops or to get stronger walls or this and that and this game 
is kind of like a free-for-all. You know, unless you're in a clan, you might be getting attacked a lot. And if you don't wise up and join a big clan, then you're just going to be farmed and your time was wasted. So, as much as the game does give out with gems, as there are events, which are very fun, uh, one of my favorite events in this game that I found myself to really like a lot was Bingo. And Bingo will can and will give out a lot of gems for free. But it's one of those things where, again, you have to be committed to playing this game because the bingo resets every hour. And if you're not on the game when it resets, then you don't basically get to participate in the bingo. So you have to be back every hour to have a chance at the bingo, to have a real good chance, I should say, as you can still try to get bingos and get free gems, but it's harder when you're not playing constantly. So, there are rewards to be earned. There are really cool rewards. There are portraits. There are certain cosmetics. Uh, again, you can get a, a fuck ton of gems for free. And another thing that I found really, really awesome about this game is the support team for this game is not bad, actually, in my experience. Anytime I've had major issues with this game or... Here's an example, one time the game bugged out for two days and I couldn't log in and there was nothing that they could do and I, I, I had to fix it. I had to go in and reinstall an older version of the game forcefully, then update it with a newer version that's currently out. Support had no idea how to guide me to do that and didn't suggest it, so that's the only downside to support. They, If they only knew certain things, it would help players get by these kind of uh, game-breaking bugs, which, in a, again, if you're trying to run a top clan and your clan thinks you're gone for two days straight, everyone will just leave. They will literally just leave. They won't tell you anything, and then they'll tell you afterwards. So when that had happened to me, and I basically lost, like, my whole clan. It is what it is. You know, shit happens. I get it. But... Support was on standby with me for those for those two days trying to help me fix the game and when I finally fixed it I mean they rewarded me for their trouble on their end They rewarded me with like at least 50 to 40 to 60 dollars worth of resources all for free just because they were sorry You know so support is pretty responsive and I mean like really responsive uh, in the game which is surprising because a lot of mobile games that I've played in my life, the support is dog shit for a lot of them. But for this game in particular, that's one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this game was the fact that the support team, they just cared. You know, they actually go out of their way to help you. Maybe your guys' experience was different than mine. Maybe you've had terrible support people. But anytime that I've had problems, they've been very fast to get back to me. And they're very open-minded to updating the game and suggestions as you can be active inside their discord to give suggestions to as to as much in my opinion as to as much as they listen to this advice and implement these updates that people are asking for like for me for example I want more detailed combat I want to see visual fighting in the game as the combat is over the top of the character's head you don't get to actually see fighting. You only get to see them like they're play fighting, right? Or pretending to kill stuff. And that's very disengaging to me and breaks the immersion for me a lot of the times, which I don't find really that, that good. You know, like the combat should be a lot more flushed out, more visual. You know, like when you're going to raid somebody, I want to feel like I'm watching this raid go down. I mean, we're already making a game that has nothing to do with the actual Walking Dead other than just the IP. Why couldn't we go to that extent to actually flush out this combat more and make it more, you know, visually stimulating to watch? You know, so that's one of my complaints for the game as well. But going back to the Toxic Wells, not everybody in the game is like that. There are genuinely some incredible people in this game I've met. 
but the one thing I could honestly say that would hold this game back that the developers need to continue to look into and continue to fine tune is the toxicity and the controlling of the servers of the top spenders that feel like they just want to be a shit bag and ruin other people's experiences because they don't agree with their opinions which is just downright awful in my opinion uh, probably one of the most only things that I could see people not wanting to play this game, and you want people to play this game, because the more people, the more the game will will continue to grow, and will receive more updates and things like that. And there's certain cool things you can purchase, which is totally optional, or you can save your gems by just playing the game and completing menial tasks, which could be from killing a certain amount of zombies essentially or going and farming for a certain amount of time in certain spots there may not be a lot of tasks to do but there are still tasks that reward with gems and cool things like that so again this game does give back to its players that are free to play which is super crucial to this game and it's longevity, meaning like even if you had to restart, you could still farm everything all over again and still save for it. But as you get into those higher town halls around 13 to 12, it does get exponentially harder to start leveling up anything. And then it costs a fortune to level up just one building. So, you know, being in a clan does help a lot. It is very advised that you get into a clan as soon as possible, as soon as you join. Or if you're brave like I am, try to run your own clan. But keep in mind that the pressure will be on that people's expectations are very short-lived. And if something happens, then they want to go on to the next best thing that's constantly evolving. Or somebody that's spent a lot of money and can afford to take a day or two off and still be ahead of everybody else. While the free-to-play players are just desperately trying to catch up as quick as, you, as we can to catch up to the people spending money getting their stuff done faster that's all I could really say in terms of like good and bad as I've tried my best to absolutely give you guys a good and bad and sure I understand there seem to be a lot more bad but that's the only way that I can explain it to you guys um, you can request troops from your clan to help you that by they'll send in troops when you request it so when you're offline, uh, troops can help protect your town. While you're gone, you do get a watchtower that you can upgrade that provides a frontline fire against the enemy before they try to get in through your gates. And also the game does have a lot of events. Like one event when you first start out on a server is the Rescue Rick event, which if unrealistically this event is incredibly hard to grind and you need a full active clan to actually complete it. I've never even come close to even getting close to completing it ever, and I haven't seen many people do it, but it rewards you with a generous amount of free shields that are either one hour to eight hours. Sometimes, rarely you'll ever maybe see a 12 hour, but usually it's one to eight hours, and they are very generous with giving these shields out, so you can use these shields to buy you a few days to not really wanna play if you're not in the mood. But also keep in mind, as there are many events from Bingo to the Rescue Rick event to the Kill All event, which allows all players to basically just go up against each other and shields are down for everybody no matter what. Unless you reactivate them, I'm assuming. I've only been able to do the Kill event one time playing the game. So, essentially the more you save your shields for that moment in particular you can basically turn your shields back on, but there'll be people where they'll be gone for a few days and then this kill all event comes in and they don't have their shields on right away or they're at work and that's when you can come in and just strike them. And everybody basically versus everybody and it lasts about a couple days. So there's little events, like I said, to kind of keep the game interesting, but a really awesome aspect that I just now am remembering to mention is the fact of when you swap to these new servers every four days, you can create three accounts on one server, meaning you can portray whoever you want to be. You want to be Michael Jackson, go for it. You want to be uh, Elvis Presley, go for it. 
you want to be an anime character, go for it. Uh, lately in the game, I've been going by as Inyasha or uh, Kinshin, Lord Kinshi. So, I've devoted certain characters for certain things. Hell, I even had a server one time where I pretended I was Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance, and I literally had a whole clan for and everything just goofing around. So, that's probably one of the most awesome things about this game that I really like, is being able to create my own identity to who I am in the game when I come in. And it's just, it's cool. You know, I don't feel like a lot of games explore that enough. You can change your name in games, yeah, sure. But in this game, you actually get pictures, profile pictures, that you can change your picture to anything you want, as long as it's not obvious stupid shit. And I mean, racist, stupid shit that's gonna get you banned. I mean, you have to be sensible here, but you know, the ability for me to have freedom of expression on the character that I want to be, you know? I mean, hell, you could even be goddamn Saddam Hussein if you wanted. You could be George Bush. You could be anybody you want in the game, you know? And to an extent, it will allow you. I don't know if it'll allow you to be those characters in particular just because they're very, like, political-type things, but, I mean, that won't stop you from at least trying or trying something else that's a goofy character you know, or you could be Stickman, and people will just address you by that, and you have all these different aliases, and three accounts on one server is incredibly awesome, because two of those bases you can make can be farming bases, or bases just meant to stockpile troops in case you're being attacked, or to basically carry dead-ass weight constantly every time I start a clan, I, I guess it's just me, or maybe the way that I figured it out is unless you have all the money in the server when it starts and you're there about an hour after it wipes or there immediately when the new server starts, meaning like a wipe server, a new server, fresh server, then it's going to be a feeding frenzy to get as many people to join your clan as possible and getting the consistent ones to actually stay can prove to be very challenging where it seems like that if you start out in the server and you spent hundreds of dollars, you're probably going to get a lot of the good people. I, that's just my assumption. I could be wrong. Maybe there's a certain way of doing it that isn't just reposting the same spam over and over again trying to recruit. Um, then, yeah, definitely do let me know in the comments down below how you guys are recruiting people. Because, uh... People make it seem easier than what it is, but it's really not, at least in my opinion. And again, people are very temperamental. Uh, one minute you guys could be chatting, everything's good. You're not on for six, seven hours, then they leave. And then it just starts one by one like a domino effect. So again, this game, you have to be incredibly active to play if you're gonna run a clan. But if not, it's co complete opposite. You have to be active to an extent, but there's more lenience towards other clans rules and things like that usually how it works in my clan is you have a three-day grace period if you're not playing for three days straight then you're obviously don't, just don't want to play but here's where it gets complicated is as the server gets older as time goes on and it becomes a couple days old new people are not coming in anymore so unless you're there essentially like the saying goes early bird gets the worm if you're not there when these servers wipe to start recruiting people, then all the good clans take all the good people and it's a struggle to try to even make a clan at that point. So there's a lot of things that need to change with this whole well system. And there needs to be, in my opinion, if the developers could figure out a way to funnel all the servers together so people can hop around whenever they want, um, Maybe it would bring dead servers back to life because I feel like that servers have shelf lives. After a few days, you're just not going to get people anymore and they've all moved on to the next server that started so they can get a better start. Like Rust, essentially a lot like Rust in so many ways. You guys would be tripped out if you'd just seen it for yourself. But anyways, if I had to give this game a review, I would give it... I would say, you know, we're going off a 1 out of 10 scale, 1 being uh, terrible, 
and 10 being awesome, the best ever game, right? I'd probably have to give this game, I would say a 5. I would say a 5 out of 10. And that's just because the toxicity of the wells and controlling the servers and everything else and the fact that servers only have a shelf life of a few days before new people won't join anymore is really uh, bad. It's not good. So they need to figure out a way to keep servers constantly fresh with people. And if the toxicity doesn't stop eventually and whales don't get it, the fact that their actions have consequences and bad negative effects and health towards the game, then in the long term, all you're going to get is the same shitty people or the same people all the time. Not everyone's shitty. No, obviously not. That's not how I meant it. But you get what I mean. You are basically going to be stuck with the same people constantly jumping servers, which again, I've met some really, really awesome people, some f foes that have become friends, you know, betrayal to rising. It all happens in this game. And I think one of the main reasons I will still continue to play it to this day, just not right now at this moment in time, but later I will be again, um, is it, a, a, it reminds me a lot of Rust. And I'm a huge Rust fan for all my audiences that know. I didn't know, yes, I'm a huge Rust fan, but also I love RTS games like Rome Total War or Clash of Clans to an extent. I don't play that no more, but you know, I don't mind if games are like Clash of Clans as long as they give back to their community, which this game does. I definitely think that a 5 out of 10 is perfect for this game. And honestly, it's just the fact of the whole toxicity in the whales, as that is a huge huge thing that needs to be addressed immediately and not later and I understand the developers are implementing moderators into games now but I've even heard stories of moderators turning a blind eye to this kind of mischievous griefing act and just griefing new players and just trolling and acting like they're big and bad just because they spent the most money and if you again if you don't agree with them or you get into an argument they'll just turn everybody against you whatever way that they do it they do you know it's really a damn shame and that's why i have to give it a strong five so would i recommend it i would i would even as a casual i, I still would you know but for me personally the game's better when you actually try to run a clan and try to get to the end you can with joining one but for me, I like the challenge. I like the aspect of being a clan leader. And I'll, I'll still continue to play this game. And I'll somewhat recommend it. I mean, I'll, I'll recommend it alone based on the good things I've said. But when it comes to those wells, that's, you know, that's going to be the deciding factor for a lot of people in black and white is, do I want to deal with toxic people that have control over me? Or do I want to play a game where I feel like I, the player, have more control over than somebody that spent more money so it's a lot to think about you know and those are just some very in-depth things that i could think of as well as pros and cons and some information about the game in general it is free to play anybody can play you all can check it out and uh let me know otherwise you know um so again i want to say thank you to all my supporters and thank you to everybody for making it to the end of the video to listen and allow me to review this game. And also, of course, you know, I'm not going to forget a big shout out to the one that inspires the video game reviews. Always, always, always Mr. Gaming Pastime, which I've already mentioned him on my channel. I've done a full video on him. Be sure to really seriously go check him out as I will again link him down below. Uh, it won't be every single time that I do these reviews that I'll mention him, but... You know, I really wouldn't be doing these reviews if it wasn't because of him. And, you know, one day I hope that I can be a better version of Mr. Gaming Pastime, but obviously being my own self. So, you know, big shout out to him and his community. And shout out to my members that continuously provide their membership fees for my channel as I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in our next gaming review. Let me know down in the comments down below what game you guys would like to see next. If you guys have suggestions, 
And if you want to leave positive feedback, that'd be awesome. If you want to leave negative, very well. That's totally fine as well, too. I just would like to know what needs to be improved then. So I appreciate everybody so much for tuning in this morning for this review that was much long requested. And I also wanted to get to it eventually to do it. But we'll just leave it on that note. And I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.